Um, let's go into the Nidas, like I said. And um, what I have here is um, a number of patents I'm going to just jump through really quickly. In my convention, we went through these in great detail. Um, so starting with the 1788 patent, um, or yeah, 17811 patent, I should say, not 1788. And um, this is, let's look at some of the most important details. And let's also consider the uh, 1788 or 17811 diagram here is um, this one we've already been looking at. So think about this diagram. Okay, so this is not as complicated as it looks. This is just a commutator uh, rotating around in four different positions, three or four different positions. This is a capacitor system only. This is not a battery system. What essentially happens is this gets charged up initially once and every rotation of this um, this commutator, this gets recharged. It gets discharged across this load and powers its load out here, bulbs, and actually electric motor to spin this. And uh, so this is the first Benitez patent from 1914, July, 19, July 28, 1914. And it was accepted May 13th, 1915. And um, essentially, he's running this system where he's getting a gain through this whole mechanism here. There's some real interesting things to note here. But he improves upon it at least four times in his uh, additions to this patent, as well as his um, later patent. So let's look at it briefly. Uh, system for the generation of electric currents, Carlos F. Benitez in Mexico, and this is a Great Britain patent. I'm not sure if it was uh, if he filed it anywhere else, or I don't see it in the United States patents. So it's one or several induction coils. Now notice that one or several. So one or two or more induction coils. So. The only way it can be several is if this is an induction coil and this becomes an induction coil perhaps. Um, or he's including this one and this one because these are separate. This is a simplified version of this. So this is not part of the first part of the patent description. He then simplifies it and removes the spark gap <clears throat> and says in his other patent that the spark gap is in included in the interrupter. <clears throat> so again, an inter this is not a, merely a transformer, it's an induction coil. Nobody seems to notice that in uh, the people who are talking about Benitez, which again, very few are, which is surprising. First of all, that's to notice. Again, just like Cook system, people miss that point, and that's critical. Um, new process for obtaining electrical currents. Okay, so this is a new process. And this is basically, again, uh, becoming an energy source. One or several induction coils. Um, Three is the primary circuit of an induction coil or transformer. All right, number three is this transformer right here. It's an induction coil. Again, there has to be right here an interrupter. So there'd be a little capacitor as well as a uh, make and break contact here. Very important. 
Um, so for each cycle of this rotation, this is going to make it break many times. So then further uh, 6 is also an oscillatory spark gap. So right here is number 6 in the circuit. And I'll provide links on my website to all this stuff. And then 11 is incandescent lamps. This is before LEDs, folks. <laughs> so 6 right here, or 11, is uh, incandescent lamps, like I said. And then on page 3, line 13, both coatings of battery 1 will be totally discharged. Um, now what's interesting is on page 2, line 43, it calls a neutral fluid of induced electrical current in, in, the, um, in the inner portions of the... Um, so right here, this is considered the inner is neutral fluid is what he's calling it and the outer is the negative energy so in this particular line he is saying that both both sides of the capacitor are going to be discharged so he makes a different distinction between when one side is only discharged and when both sides you know you can scratch your head on that one and think about it but it's just I'm noticing here all the peculiar statements that I think need to be paid attention to in these processes. Because these guys did succeed in what they're doing. The people today are not succeeding. So we need to go back to the people who accomplished these things and uh, learn from them. And that's what I do. Um, so here we again we have the flow of this part of electricity from battery 9 sets free immediately on the exterior coating of the same battery 9 an equal quantity of negative electricity. So that's interesting. Um, now when he says battery 9, he's talking about a battery of condensers. He's not talking about a regular battery. So this was uh, number 9. Battery number 9. So he's talking about when this discharges to the ground here, this induces a current here. Um, very interesting statement. All right. Thus, by the system above described, will be obtained a constantly increasing production of electric currents. There's your free energy over unity claim. A part of said currents can be directed through transformer 10 just as in Cook's system with the rheostat resistance, I added that, of course. So, rheostat, or the 10 transformer 10, so there he calls it a transformer, not an induction coil. And this is called induction coil, this is later called induction coil, this is called a transformer, this is called a transformer. This one, I'm not sure if he called that transformer or not, but I don't remember. Um, all right, the system so arranged will run indefinitely without any exterior help, being automatically fed by itself, and furthermore, producing an excess of energy that can be applied at any moment to any desired object by means of transformers duly connected to wire 32. Now, we can't put patents through <laughs> and outright say that anymore, but that was Great Britain, um, as well as uh, Cook's patent, clearly said those things. Now. Mind you, there are literally thousands of over-unity patents, and you just don't know it. There's devices in your own home that are actually over-unity devices, you just don't know it. Um, <laughs> so, this is something that's disguised from you by using merely resistance and amperage to uh, be your judge of over-unity, instead of realizing that there is another component um, to these systems um, 
and that you, the circuitry used um, destroys the overunity aspect of many different systems. Uh, but anyway, let's look at these clearly clear ones that are stated as such. Um, okay, so without employing the high frequency currents, similar results may be tamed by the lower right hand side of the drawing. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. This way is also this way. Um, uh, both induction coils. So he says primaries 50 and 58 are both induction coils. Um, and this way uh, will increase progressively the storage. Um, notwithstanding said electric charges have to decrease from one another until they are no of no importance at all. Um, so, let's see here. So what happens is these um, capacitors will gain and then they'll discharge across this and then, of course, when you have a load, it will um, use up the charge. What's interesting with a capacitive charge and discharge system is when you charge a capacitor with another capacitor, say once full, once discharged to zero, you lose half the energy in the amount of total charge you have. Um, this is what some people don't realize. It's not the same as a battery system like this, where you can transfer the energy, so to speak. The capacitor loses it instantly. And um, um, I don't want people to misunderstand my illustration in my other video where I charged up one capacitor from another one. And uh, then I repeated the same process with running a bulb in between. And we had the same amount of energy. I mean, we've lost half the energy. But we had the same amount of energy between the two bulbs, or between the two capacitors. Uh, whether we use the bulb or not. So there was no losses in the, belt, the bulb uh, in that system. But in this case, we have a gain in our capacitors um, because we're using the disruptor in the, in the coil. If you were just to try and, and run this as a transformer, just like people were trying to do a cook system, oh, I can never get it to work. Well. You misunderstood the fundamental principle of the induction coil that it is a gain system and um, it can be a significant gain as well. And so, in this case, he's restoring this battery uh, or this capacitor each rotation and he's also producing output. Um, so, that is the very basic or very first system. Um, and he also wants to explain here that the use of mercury vapor converters or cathodic valves as described are not in any manner indispensable in the system. In other words, these are diodes, one-way valves, and the use of them is not important. Don't think that this is an essential. But I want to draw your attention here. If you look at this secondary winding here, if this is the primary, for example, and same with here, and same with here, and here. Notice they're both facing one direction. They're one-way valves, and they're, they're not going like this. You can see the arrows pointing. He's got arrows on all of the direction that they're going. And the thing is, they are, um, because of the nature of this, um, as the current passes through this way or this way, however you look at it, it induces a response on the other side. But this being of a different value, these will sort of oscillate and influence each other in, in a tank circuit many times, because the tank circuit is right here with when you consider the capacitor across it. And so what happens is, this is charge, discharge, back and forth oscillation, and there's a gain here. And because of the difference, 
in timing, you can have the two diodes in the same direction and actually gate the energy out back as he describes in his patent. So the two significant things in this is that you've got a capacitor only gain system, which is definitely the first one to ever be shown in history as far as I can see. I mean, Tesla did some of these things, but he never really gave us a patent to uh, say it like this and make it so simple uh, as the neatest system. And then, of course, he then adds this. Uh, how he does it is with the induction coil and a unique arrangement here um, of cycling this energy around. It's, if you look at the Tesla shuttle circuits, it's, it's a similar idea of shuttling energy around. But again, this is very clearly shown to us how to do it. <clears throat> so who's the first exactly is uh, hard to say. This is the first patent that I know. Um, he claims to be the first to do this. And it's a new system. So then, um, so that's that. Let's go on to the next, which is a patent addition to this patent. Uh, Fine number 5591. So if we go here, there's my description of what's going on. We'll look at that in a second. And um, let's look at the So here is the actual patent. Um, application the 14th. Um, so then he adds to this the invention, um, the main patent number 17811. So he's adding to it right here an improvement, relates to an improvement in the system. Um, and so let's read what we have to, what he has to say here. So that's that one. We're done with that, and we'll go into this one. So um, I wasn't able to uh, do this because you have to have. Um, A couple of things set up which I don't have set up yet <clears throat> but uh, he, it says it's an improvement upon that patent like I just said and um, says by con by condenser suitably placed so as to receive separately the direct and inverse currents from the transformers thus avoiding the use of converters which are full inductor induction coils with interrupters. So he's actually replaced the induction coils as far as I gather from this oops. from this system he's adding um, the diagram is right here. Okay so you can see this A and C are in series and this A and C are also in series, so this becomes a battery of condensers. So two, one or two, or two or more condensers is a battery. And then this one is the primary one that gets charged. So if you look at my diagram here, this is essentially what's happening. Stage one. He charges up the first capacitor with some external source. Stage two, he's discharging this capacitor across this transformer here, which I'm not certain whether he's not using induction coil or not in this. It would seem it would seem that he would have to. Um, and what happens is then 
this arrangement takes place where, um, and of course this is going to earth ground, so that's important to know. But as he discharges this, this is what takes place. Equal, they're all equal capacitors. So we've got two series parallel kind of connections here. Well, they're actually series. So this is kind of what, kind of what we're doing with this loving path arrangement here. We're opening the loop up. And this is the third stage where he's discharging these now in series with these different connections in this uh, you can see uh, 3, 11 and uh, 9, 10 these are all sorts of <coughs> gates, switches so then he discharges these across this double configuration here of transformers and he recharges up so with every rotation he charges up <clears throat> he says it's minimal but it is a constant gain um, so we'll just briefly go over this it's the same sort of thing but it is an improvement upon the last one so what he means by without the use of converters is uh, talking about the induction coils. I'm not exactly sure because he's talking about transformers. He directly uses that word so we don't have the use of um, which we don't have the use of the word induction coils in this part, this addition of the patent. Um, so all the electricity stored by the two condensers A will pass through the same primary and through its through this quality of electricity is equal to that produced by the discharge of condenser 1 minus the loss caused by the transformation by transformation so he does acknowledge the loss and yet there is still a total gain the energy induced by this discharge is double so he's saying that is a double gain right here there is a double amount of energy gain in this so even though he has a loss in this, there's still double the amount of energy gained in this stage of the process. And therefore he can still send back the energy here as well as get a gain out here. So he's getting full restoration there and a gain output there. Again, it's not, um, as significant as later patents here. Um, because the electric pressure now occasioned by the connection of condensers A and C is double that produces the discharge of single condenser. So he will say here the same thing. To this, I, to this, that is to say the original conditions being thus reestablished at every turn of the cylinder. 38, the same phenomenon will be produced indefinitely as many times as the revolutions of said cylinder are repeated without having recourse to any exterior aid. So let's look at that picture. Oops. This is it now physically laid out. These are uh, the condensers, one, number one being charged initially. A and C here, A and C there, and these are the uh, either induction coils or just transformers. I don't see anything in here showing a, um, but this is just a, it's kind of like a block diagram. Um, so he's making and break contacts here. You can see that correspond to these terminals. Um, you can do that solid state, no big deal. So that's that pattern. Let's move on from, let's keep this one up and uh, close out this one now. Let's go on to the next pattern, which is 
14, 3, 11. And this is um, very significant. This is what we're showing right here. This is exactly what I'm doing right here in front of you right now. So I will show this in the diagram. First of all, let's pull up the patent. 14. Right here, we already have it pulled up. And this is another aspect of this that no one has talked about yet. <clears throat> which has a unique configuration. Actually, this is what I'm doing right here, exactly. It's similar to this, but this is what I'm doing as an improvement. Yeah. So there's two aspects to this number, um, 14, 3. And this is an addition as well to the first patent. So you can see here, this date is... Um, it was filed October 9th, 1915, patent edition, and it was, the one specification was February 5th, 1916, and the other one was August 17th, the one I'm doing here, 1916. So let's um, keep this open here. Let's look at this specifically because this is, um, what I want to show here. Um, and again, we can just run it briefly. You can see the oscilloscope. You can see the little spike on there. Uh, and that is just one connection on the charging side of the um, circuit, we could probably look at this side, and we can look at negative side. I didn't really care about this scope shot, but just wanted to show it just in case anyone wants to see that. <coughs> And you can see the batteries. Oops. I showed it right at the beginning running. It is charging up. If we stop it, we can see <coughs> the difference. And um, we got quite a bit of power out of those lights for what we're drawing. Now, what we do is look at the voltage between these two batteries. Like I said, let's look at the diagram first, actually. Don't want to say too much and confuse everybody. So while it, it's somewhat like this, um, I do have a transformer across this condenser here, 14, which then brings it to become, like this is slightly different than the first part. Oops, we won't look at this anymore. So this is again, you can see there's a connection across here, which I don't have in my setup because I am following oops, the latter part of this down here. So if you look at this right here, I'm actually doing this with the condenser. He talks about the condenser not being across the contacts from here to here, but across here all the way to the negative. So I have this yellow wire coming back to the negative terminal. So again, let's look at this upper diagram to show 
um, too many things on, going on here. So, where is it right here? So essentially you have two battery banks, right? So let's say this is 24 volts and this is 12 volts. Two in parallel, two in series. And we're connecting up the two negatives together. And what we're doing is running between the two positives. So you call it splitting the positives as in the gray system, that gray system. Um, but in this case, I'm running, like what we do in our motor systems like this, is we run the motor at that point in between the two positives on our second level system. The, the basic system runs, uh, you know, just with a two battery system like that. And then the more advanced has this sort of arrangement with the four battery. And then this becomes your third bank down here or load. So in this case, what I'm doing is adding the transformer at number 30 here and running the bulbs across um, completely isolated here. And I'm actually doing a little bit of a Caduceus system here. I'm running, um, you can see the white wires are um, the input is here, the red wires are the input, and the yellow wires are the output. The white wires are actually making this, this is across the primary, or um, smaller gauge wire, and then I go over to the secondary for one loop. So I backtrack. I, I come down and up back up again, and rather than just doing one primary or, or both terminals because this is uh, this is a uh, uh, well anyway so the point is what I'm saying here is I'm connecting up this is how I've connected the circuit the one side of the condenser is all the way over here so again this is the input side coming down going through here, this is the primary wire, and there's the other end. So we're not actually on this side connected at all, except through the secondary winding. So this arrangement is additive. Like, let's look at the amps on here. And um, so running this 51 or 51 milliamps, and the voltage between the two positives is our running voltage, which is about 12, 12 volts. 11.72 minus 12.4. And 55. So while the amperage seems to go up with adding this, the charging, the discharging, well, sometimes it cuts out. Without the capacitor, it changes. And that little uh, hammer kind of swivels. So you can hear a noticeable difference when I disconnect it. Oh, you can see the oscilloscope too. So when I disconnect it, you can see that there's big spikes on it there. And so the cap absorbs it. There's a bit of a difference in the bulbs, not much, but the efficiency goes up when I do this. 
And so because I am uh, putting it here, it is measuring more amperage on the, um, it's about five milliamp difference on this clamp meter, which I'm not trying to say is entirely accurate, but, uh, but there is a difference. There's a gain in that part of it with changing the capacitor. So this is one of the improvements that he adds to this instead of the capacitor across the terminals right here, well actually from here to here. He's, um, or let's look at that. Instead of the capacitor right here, so you can see clearly the capacitor is on either side of this make and break contact. So what we're doing now is we're putting one end, he says in the patent as long as one end is connected to the, um, to one of the sides, that's all that matters. It doesn't have to be across here. Now with Cook's system, we want to have that across here because otherwise we'll shut the whole thing down. There has to be continuity here. Whereas the Benita system, we're connecting all the way up to the other side. So um, essentially this is what I'm doing right here with the transformer. Again, it should be down here. So again, notice this is isolated. It's going around to the negative terminal or between the two negatives. Again, this is just a commutator system, not to be, um, be confused by. It's essentially, essentially this, I can keep, uh, where am I here? <laughs> essentially this. So I wanted to show that. Now let's read through some of the details here. Um, he's using lower voltages in the system because he doesn't have a spark gap. He does have the induction coil. Um, and he does show the picture of that in the patent here. Like I said, it's shown right here, but it's not shown here. So that's the same thing, the very same patent talks about it here and draws it up without the interrupter because it's just distracting the person from noticing that and shows it here just to make sure you don't miss it here. So between the two, you got to realize that's how these patents are done. Um, sometimes they include, so you got to pay attention to what's in the wording. That's why I'm giving you these things in Word. So again, low voltages, condensers of small capacities, and uh, <coughs> he's talking about batteries in this case. Both batteries are alike. So he's actually drawing these down, this battery bank, 24 volts down to, uh, to equal voltage with this one. Now, he's not using 12 volts in this system, I am. Um, it doesn't matter in that sense. I think he's talking about four volts in these batteries. Um, so it doesn't really matter in that regards, but he actually runs them right down. Whereas on my motor systems, I really can't do that because the motor can't operate at one volt. Um, but this is, because this is a solid state device, it can run down to lower voltages and still operate if you've got a good induction coil. <clears throat> All right, so. Both poles of condenser 14 are connected to condensers 30, through which a part of the electric energy provided by these means can be shunted and employed at will. So let's look again at the first picture. So 14 both terminals are connected to either side of the charging positive, input positive, and he's running a load off of this continuously. So that's a closed loop in that sense. But this right here becomes the open loop. And this creates enough energy to not only supply the energy consumed here, 
to fully charge this battery with its losses. With this alone, without this whole aspect of it, um, you're going to have a loss. And he says that right in the patent itself, um, that there's losses. And I'll try and find that here. Conditions, uh, under these conditions, the breaker interrupter employed in said induction coil acts as a spark gap. So again, that is this particular He's going, well, let's look at the other diagram here. So I have here a series of, uh, no, it's the same one. Um, okay, so this is the full diagram um, with the assumed interrupter, right? It doesn't show that in the patent, though, again. It shows it like this, but he clearly stated in there, in that point, page three, line one and four, he says that we can go then to making it simplified. By this method. So this is without my transformer in here, just running the load directly across there. So he says we don't have to use the secondary transformer and um, spark gap, which is right here is the spark gap, secondary transformer here. We can use the interrupter still as the spark gap for a lower voltage system. In other words, this, this creates a lot of high voltage which is actually disrupts our electronics here. It's not good for my computer to run this so close like this. So let's go on a little bit further here. Um, condenser 14. I'm going to have to pull up the patent again. 14 is connected as usual by this pole 52 to pole 17. So now we're on this one. Pole 52 to 17 here. Notice how this arrangement is different. And when I actually add this here, the current goes up on the meter slightly, but actually it's not, it's discharging this battery less. It's producing more of a current in the system showing in the meter. Um, however, it's charging the battery faster discharging slower with that means. And we can see the spike again. So showing the spike is not necessarily a good thing in a system. It's not absorbing into the battery, which is where we want it, or in the load. Oops. See what happens when I disconnect it. Um, can actually cause the thing to turn off. So you have to look at it with a different voltmeter that has three, three digits. Um, so anyway, let's go back to the description. Um, so instead of being connected back to the stud 
of the breaker, as usually is the case, is grounded through the commutator. So, notice again, instead of being across the stud from here to here, so in other words, this side coming over to here, as in the normal case, which he said here, right? And again, in Cook's, Cook's patent, you'd have to do this way, otherwise you'd break the contact and it would turn off because there is no source. The capacitor would have to hold that, maintain that cycling. Um, and, and Benita's system, it's actually better that we do this. That's why I've done this, because I was doing it the other way. And then when I got to this point, in this part of the patent, I changed it, rather than, um, you know, to do this. So you can see, instead of this terminal coming across here and here, as is in the case of the original, like you can see here, there's the points across here and here. I mean, while it is on this side of the coil, it still is on this side of the coil as well, the capacitor. Unless this particular one is not showing the capacitor. Um, at any rate, it's very clearly shown here to be in a different spot. So it's something to experiment with and see for yourself. There is a game there. And let's go back to the diagram or the description. Um, so as a consequence of the passage of electric current produced by the discharge through primary 15 of the transformer, induced currents are produced in the secondary and one of these currents, the inverse passing through 19, is immediately utilized for charging the same battery in parallel. Blah, blah, blah. The direct current that is produced when the discharge of said condenser 14 is finished passing through 18. Um, so they re, they, they re, the phenomena is reproduced. Yeah reproduce several times in the beats or intervals of breaks and makes produced by the interrupter. So again, he's talking about this part right down here. And it can be replaced. So, okay, so then this point is actually he's talking about adding, um, taking away the ground from the negative terminals here and running this cap to the ground instead. So I got ahead of myself a little bit there. Um, better results in every step may be obtained by the use, oh wait, sorry, I was looking at the wrong spot here. Um, if the pole fit 56 of the commutator is not grounded, so again, going up here, Pole 56 is right here. There's the ground. If it's not grounded, then what I just said applies. Then, each time that the condenser 14 receives a new charge, the neutral fluid of its outer coating is influenced through its dielectric. An induced electric current is forced to move via 54 and 56 of the wire, which is right here. 54, and uh, 56 is right there. So each time it induces a movement on its outer coatings, the neutral fluid of its outer coatings. So it's interesting, again, to make the distinction between the inner and the outer coatings. Um, and induced electric current is forced to move in other words, this electric energy equal, uh, equally increases the normal output of battery 1 and 2. 
the input battery. So that's why you see, like I said, you'll see a slight uh, difference in uh, if I can hold this up where you can see it. See now, depending on where I hold this ridiculous thing, <laughs> it will change. And it takes a little bit of time before it responds. That's what I found in all these kinds of induction systems. It doesn't happen immediately. And I want to show something here. Just so that there's no funny business to anybody worrying about what I'm doing here. This particular red wire here, because the it's just connected to this the two ends of the wires. They're not isolated from each other. This particular induction coil had it that way. I didn't really want to mess with the wires, but it was supposed to come up to this stud. And I don't actually want it connected on that side. I want to make that clear to everybody. Um, so what I'm saying is my diagram is uh, like this. In order to do this arrangement with this particular coil, I had to 16 and 17, or 17 and 18 are connected together. So I had to pull the wires out separately to make it come happen all on this side rather than on this side. Because I didn't want, I wanted these two wires, 17 and 19, to be separated from each other. And uh, they were connected, so I had it come out this way. This was got this has some water damage to it. So one of these contacts doesn't work. This one right here. Uh, two of the wires underneath aren't connected properly. So anyway, um, I just wanted to point that out in this particular model here. And so what they do is they, like I said, have A whole bunch of holes with slots for the wires to go from one point to another on these. So you got to figure out your particular induction coil if you get one of these old ones, just how it's laid out before you can use it. Uh, when I initially got this, it didn't really didn't work because I didn't realize one of the wires was broken and. Um, I had to figure out how it actually ran properly. Like I said, a lot of these ran at 4 volts rather than 12 volts, so you got to be careful you don't burn it out. Um, now it's interesting, he said, better results may be attained by the use of a closed core transformer, that's what this is, and combined with an electrolytic interrupter. That was an interrupter in a, a sulfuric uh, mixture. And then there was a glass tube filled with mercury for one of the contacts. And the, uh, the arcing, or it was, inter it was not, there was no loss in time intervals between makes and breaks, as he says here. And the resistance of such devices can be easily adjusted with distance from a distance. Um, so that came about around that time of this patent, 18, you know, maybe about 10 years earlier. And that's where they were getting into the higher power levels. You can't push a lot of power through such a connection as this without creating great arcing in, on the uh, terminals. So they went into, when they, when they uh, beefed up these systems, they 
went to that level. And they still make those electrolytic interrupters and are still using them in various things today. So again, a continuous current can be maintained through wire 55, which is this wire coming to the transformer and going back. Again, here's the diagram. Um, let's go to the patent actually. Wire 55, there's a transformer, there's 55 again. So a continuous current can be maintained, which is the primary 57 ordinary transformer. There again, he says ordinary transformer rather than induction coil, making a very clear distinction. Or any other suitable device can be inserted in series in order to profit the surplus of electrical energy thus obtained without impairing in the least the running of the mechanism. And again, um, so there's your free energy over unity claim. Um, the last line is interesting, it's four volts he was talking about this particular system running at. And he's talking about either a 60 amp hour battery or a 10 amp hour battery. Um, it will still, um, can be done either way. Um, so bigger batteries, smaller batteries, higher power, lower power, whatever is the case. So that's that uh, particular uh, patent, and uh, let's go on to the last one.